Okei. Okei. I'm Jean-Robert de Cavell. I decided to cook the day when I turned 16. I've been doing it for 40 plus years and you know it's a, it's not a job, you know, it's a lifestyle. He thinks food the way we taste food. He can look at this, this and this and know exactly if he puts that together here how that's going to taste here. I have nothing to do with putting the, you know, the, the most expensive food or doing the most expensive elaborate dishes. It's more like about sharing. Food is, it's, you can connect anywhere, you know, you can go anywhere and it's not about understanding a language, it's understanding something, you know, like something you want to share. Well, John Robert and I have been friends for 23 years and uh, my wife set up a special birthday surprise for me. And it was a celebrating a huge birthday and this wife was looking for, to do something different. And so, you know, I, you know, I said, if he enjoyed cooking, why not having him coming and spend a day with us? Learned more that one day from him than I learned in my previous 40 years of cooking just for fun. And at the end of the day, he said, you cooked the meal, you served your friends and you had to pay for it. You know, we became close that day. And so we, you know, went from a customer, you know, to someone who know me, to, to a friend, to you know, like more like a family member. John Robert came to me a little over a year ago, about a year and a half ago now. And um, I could see he was uh, visibly upset. Person that he is, people that know him, they know he's, he's a, uh, very passionate, emotional man, and he started tearing up and said, what, what, what's the matter? And he said, uh, I found out I have cancer. And I said, oh my gosh. I was not feeling very good and, um, and you know, I keep going to my doctor telling him that I, something was wrong. And of course, you know, I, I had some tests down and, and then I had to, you know, see an oncologist and I, I mean, it was, it was really difficult. He didn't look like he was sick. He didn't look like he had a had this kind of serious issue. I mean, the first menu you buy yourself after leaving the doctor office is one of the, and I was by myself and I want to be by myself because, you know, I didn't, same thing, I didn't want my wife to be there. I didn't want, I want to deal with that with my, and then I realized that I was not strong enough to deal with, to deal with it by myself. I was not strong enough. So, you know, How do you, you know, how do you deal with that? You know, I mean, remember I was in my car for a while and I came here and, I, you know, and I didn't know, I mean, I talked to Denise. I called Denise before I talked to my wife because I didn't want her to be affected, you know, because it's like, you know, and uh, you start thinking of all of the things you hear about, everything you, the story you know from everybody, the, you know, who got affected by it, so, you know, things you saw on TV or things you read in a newspaper or in a, you know, magazine, and suddenly everything come back to you. It's, no, I'm one of these people, you know, no, I'm one of these people who have going to deal with that. And uh, I said, all right, buddy, we're not messing around with this. We're going to find the best. We're going to, we're going to hit it hard and fast. We're not waiting on this for about seven and a half months, uh, we went to treatment. I went with him, but uh, what was amazing is in all of these treatments for months and months and months, he never missed a day of work. He was at Restaurant L, he was at Table, he was at Crust, he was at Frenchy Fresh. He was cooking, he was managing, and he did all of his events. <laughs> his charitable organizations he still participated with. Never missed a day. One day he called me, he said, I don't feel good today. And uh, I said, is, is it from the chemo? He said, no, I've got a head cold. <laughs> it isn't gonna go away, it's not curable. He knows that, uh, doctors have told him that, but it's manageable and, and they're managing it properly. I mean, I started having my hair grow after the, after the, after the chemo and, and everybody's like telling me, I'm, you know, I look good and I want people to care for me, but I don't want them to have any sympathy for me. I just want to be the John Robert they know and the John Robert they will always know. After, after it was out there for a while, then the American Cancer Society came to him and wanted him to uh, become involved with him, which he was happy to do. It, it's amazing how many times and ways that 
uh, John Robert is called upon by organizations, individuals, companies, charities to assist, and uh, uh, he just doesn't say no. He's always there. I always say people who want to be served and people who love to serve. And I think I'm one of these person who love to serve. I love to be there for people. I love to, I love to give, you know, and uh, when you become a cook, you try to do something and you try to share with that with someone. I feel like it's important to be there for people. I think it's important to try the best you can do. You know what I mean? I think it's important to, to be to be part of the community. I think it's important. I mean, so many things, so many things where you have to be, you know, and it's it's about caring. And I think, and, and that's a beautiful thing about caring. You know, you, when you care, people care. I would say to John Robert, um, first of all, um, every once in a while, somebody comes into your life can be your wife, friend, whomever. Uh, he came into the life of Cincinnati and the people here. And this guy could cook in any city in the world. Shanghai, Paris, you name it, anywhere. And he chose to stay in Cincinnati. And uh, every once in a while, someone comes into your life and it's never the same. There are probably hundreds of people who deserve this, but he would certainly be at the top of the list. And what a way to start it off with an individual, a personality, a iconic figure for the city of Cincinnati. And I can't think of anybody better to, to receive it really. Lifetime achievement, you know, that's what I, even that title scare me. Do you know oh, what yeah, I mean? Yeah, <laughs> that's title scare me. What do you mean lifestyle? Do you know what I mean? I still act like I'm 35 years old. You know what I mean? And I still want to act like that for a few more decades.